please set the volume control to the level of my voice. about a biologist, one of those individuals who loves the handiwork of nature, especially the way it was before man came along and made a mess of things. And a boy, just a normal American boy who loves the outdoors too and sees absolutely nothing wrong with things just as they are. After all, he's young and on vacation, and there's just no place for having fun like on the coast at vacation time. story could be almost any boy at almost any coastal area. But it just so happens that this particular boy is spending his vacation on the Gulf Coast. He's been coming here since he was knee-high to an alligator. They all like it here on the coast, away from the concrete jungle back home. Even two weeks living closer to nature gives them a chance to rediscover a little of what the precious gift of life is really all about. As for the boy, well, as I said before, there's just nothing like the fun people can have on a vacation near the water, especially along the Gulf of Mexico. real fishing country and fishermen from all over the world are invited to try their luck in deep sea fishing rodeos. This sort of illustrates an important fact of life that the average visitor doesn't usually concern himself with. Most of the seafood that people eat back home comes from coastal areas like this. Every day commercial fishing boats are in action dipping down into waters rich with life to bring up tons of fish and shellfish for distribution around the country. A multi-million dollar food gathering industry has been built up here on the Gulf Coast so people can enjoy shrimp cocktails in Phoenix, and oysters Rockefeller in Fort Wayne, and stuffed flounder in Sioux City, crab imperial in Detroit. life on the Gulf and in ports all along the coast, people still observe the traditional blessing of the fishing fleets, asking for divine help that when their nets are pulled in, they will always be full. It's no accident that coastal waters are so rich in sea life. Nature designed things that way, creating all the shallow bays and lagoons and marshes that we have come to call estuaries. To many people, estuaries look like waste lands. 
but actually they form an important and ever-changing buffer zone between land and sea, where the tides move in the salt water from the ocean to meet and mingle with the fresh water from the land. The minerals and topsoil these waters carry form a fertile brew that much of our sea life requires to survive and grow. This is where shrimp and many fish spend their young lives and where some shellfish live their whole lives, feeding on tiny plants and animals that grow in the water. Here, sheltered by the grasses that grow in the first few feet of coastline, there is the beginning of what we call the food chain. The small fish and shellfish that live in estuarine waters provide food for larger sea life that in turn swim out to sea and feed the still larger fish. Someone has estimated that at least two-thirds of all food fish depend in some way on estuaries for their survival. The rich and abundant life in these estuaries provides food for birds, too. Millions of them call these marshes home. The ducks and the geese that migrate here every winter to wait out the cold weather up north, and all the wonderful species that are year-round residents of the Gulf Coast. They all live here together where there is open space and ample food. But even while these coastal areas are nature's breeding place for sea and bird life, while they offer a delightful haven for people trying to escape the hubbub of the city and an ideal place for sport fishing and hunting, while they make possible an important commercial fishing industry, they also have great value to other people. There's oil beneath the sea, beneath the bays and marshes perhaps some of the richest fields in the world. Estuaries make desirable locations for industry, for easy transportation and the huge quantities of water used in many production processes. And they appeal to more and more people for permanent living. In fact, when you consider that a third of our population lives within 50 miles of the sea, you can see why a tremendous and growing pressure is being put on our coastal areas. What does it mean, all this busy activity around our estuaries and along our coastline? To the boy, it means very little because all he's thinking about is how are the fish biting? But to the biologist, it means a problem that is growing more serious every day. It's more than a boy throwing trash on a beach. It's what people in general are doing to spoil this great natural resource that they have enjoyed for as long as men have lived. What the biologist sees saddens him, for it is literally a case of man fouling his own nest. He sees more than litter strewn along the shore. He sees pollution in the water, sewage from cities and towns upriver, industrial wastes from factories, pesticides from farms, all flowing down into the estuaries, robbing the waters of their oxygen poisoning fish and wildlife, killing many, and leaving those that survive unfit for consumption. He sees this same pollution depriving people of the very advantages they have come to the shore to enjoy. He sees rivers being dammed miles upstream. Important for electric power, municipal water supplies, and recreation, yes. But sometimes slowing down the flow of fresh water to the sea. This can change the proportion of fresh to salt water in the estuaries, thus permitting saltwater enemies, such as the oyster drill, 
to invade the nursery grounds and devour the defenseless sea life. He sees leakage from oil rigs and platforms contaminating the water. He sees rivers and bays being dredged, spilling mud over acres of lush underwater feeding grounds, increasing the water depth to a point where sunlight cannot reach the bottom and support the growth of grasses. He sees the natural shoreline being replaced by bulkheads, eliminating the source of food for countless fish and birds. He sees rich marshlands being drained and filled for building new housing developments and roads and airports. And he sees what all this means in this cradle of wildlife. Whole species dying off, disappearing, never to return. Who can evaluate the loss of a species of fish, or mammal, or bird? No one can. These are values that every person must determine for himself. But the loss of sea life that depends on our estuaries for survival can be measured in millions of dollars of income to all the people who go out every day to bring it in, and in the elimination of an important part of the diet of millions of people who enjoy seafood. Of course, the pressures of civilization inevitably bring about change. What is needed is wise management of our coastal resources, sewage that is processed before it is emptied into the water, refuges set aside for wildlife, the first two or three feet of shoreline with their grasses so vital to sea life preserved when property is developed. Dredged soil put on shore instead of spread over the floor of the estuaries. The fact is dredging can be so planned and supervised that damage is kept to a minimum. Construction projects can be built on solid land instead of drained marshlands. Oil leaks can be reduced. Littering can be eliminated. The biologist explains it to the boy. Every person must do his part in preserving our estuaries or the birds will one day be gone and the boating and the beaches and the fish. And then what kind of place will the boy come to visit on his vacation? And his boy and his boy's boy. Yes, it's a lot more than just littering a beach with a little trash. The boy knows that now. He's glad to have had the chance to meet the biologist on this vacation trip to the Gulf Coast. He knows now he'd like to do just a little something to clean up some of the mess people are making of this world we live in. At least to make a start. Thank you.